Welcome to Uriah Heep, the Magician's Podcast. I'll be covering every studio song the band has recorded and every bonus track that I can find. Each week we'll go over a new song from the beginning to where they are currently, and as they keep adding albums, I'll keep adding shows. Let the deep dive party begin. In the magic garden, some were singing, some were dancing. Hello and welcome to another episode of Uriah Heap, the Magician's Podcast. I am your host, Scott Haskin, and here with me is my ever-present co-host for this season, Dave White. Dave, how are you? Hey, Scott. I am back again. How are you? I'm doing great, my friend. Always good to hear your deep voice. Awesome. Awesome. You too. Another week has gone by, but for our listeners, it's only a day or two. Uh, how how was your week? Actually, very good. Very good. The weather has turned. It's nicer now. Oh, good. So we have we have humidity and some little bit of sprinkling of rain. And I found out that one of my favorite guys is coming to my town to play. A guy named Joe Vitale Jr. So he's going to be here in June. And my other friend who lives up in Cleveland, who's got a really great band, I was going to play here in Canton, which is down the down, down the road. So, in the beginning of July, so it's been a good week. I heard a lot of stuff that was going to be happening, and uh, that's that. Things do seem to be returning a little bit. Uh, would that be Joe Vitale Jr.? Would that be uh, someone related to Joe Vitale from The Secret? Yeah, family, <laughs> his son. Yeah. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah, the drummer for uh, Joe Walsh. Very nice. I interviewed uh, Mark Victor Hansen, who was the co-writer of Chicken Soup for the Soul with Jack Canfield, who was also in The Secret. Okay. I don't know anything about that, but I I didn't know who Joe Vitale was. Yeah. Oh, that's very cool. Yeah. uh, It seems like things are starting to open up. I'm seeing a lot of concert dates locally uh, pop up, bands that are starting to come to Vegas again. The NAMM show, uh, which is normally in January, has been off for two and a half years. They're coming back in uh, June, so I'll be in California for that. Uh, things seem to be returning. In fact, uh, they lifted the all the bands for any event over a thousand people. It had to be that you would get a COVID test within a day of getting your badge, and they've waived all of that now for for That's Southern California. Now. Yeah, great, great. So great. I think it's great. You know, maybe I hope it's great. I hope so too. Uh, we'll find out how what condition I come back from California, and I, I suppose I suppose we will. <laughs> Uh, I'm still pretty precautious, though. I mean, even when I when I go out here on the strip, because we have people here from all over. So, uh, you know, we have to take a little bit more precaution here, even though most people don't. So uh, is the name Nam going to be in the same place it's been. Yeah, it'll be in the Anaheim Convention Center. Yeah. OK, looking cool. forward to it. Uh, the last time I was there two and a half years ago, I doubled the the members of Deep Purple that I met within about 45 minutes. I went from two to four. <laughs> So slowly creeping up the (laughs) the list. (laughs) That's funny. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I want to throw something out there to you guys. Uh, If anybody has any pictures from the nights that these concerts were taped, please send them in to UriahHeatPodcast at gmail.com. We would love to see them. Uh, I'll even share them with Dave. That'd be wonderful. We have, uh, we have, I know of a few pictures. Obviously, mm-hmm. some of the ones on the album are from the from the two nights. Mm-hmm. Uh, I do know of another one that exists that, I, that I, I've seen, but I'd love to know if there's any more. So let's find out. Yeah, you know, I I often wonder if in a in an album the pictures we see are really from that tour because usually the album precedes the tour, but when you have a live album they've usually been playing for a little while before they go in and record. They want right. the band to get settled and comfortable. So well, I would say there's a good chance those are actually from the shows. Some of them are. Yes. We are. Yeah. We, we, we're, we're confirmed on a few of them. Uh, not all of them, obviously, because some are, you know, uh, kind of like glamour shots and you know, just publicity shots they threw in the album, but there are a few um, of them on stage uh, in an album cover in the original, you know, gatefold. So, yeah. But I'm sure there's more out there. We just don't know of any that exist right now. And we would love to see them if anybody's got them. Yeah, definitely. So a lot of you guys are really dedicated fans. Maybe some of you were even at this show. Uh, I'd love to hear the story, too. If if you guys were at this show, uh, write in and tell us about it. I'd love to hear that. Um, So that is uh, UriahHeatPodcast at gmail.com. Easy enough to find. 
And uh, today, you know, we had a few technical issues we, <laughs> that we uh, we paddled through. Dave did a, a great job getting everything back up and running, but it left me with, are you ready for this? Tears in my eyes. <laughs> Oh, Scott, I'm embarrassed. I never promised the humor on this show was going to be good. Never once. So I I'm, thought this was the, I, th- I thought this was the song about cutting up onions. <laughs> <laughs> I I have uh, I started putting onions in my salad, red onions because they're really good for uh, monitoring your your blood sugar. Apparently, <laughs> and man, though, th- there's got to be some kind of trick or something that you can use to not tear up as soon as you chop that thing in half because that's. That's a pretty powerful little vegetable there. I have never eaten an onion that I've known was there. Unless it's, <laughs> it, unless it's in by accident or it was a Burger King onion ring. Those are okay. Yeah. But generally, I don't touch onions. I can't stand those things. They ruin the taste of food, in my opinion. They are very powerful, yes. And uh, I worked at Burger King for a while, and I can tell you the onion rings were the best thing about that job. I love those things. Mm-hmm. I don't think they're real onions. That's probably why I like them. Well, it's probably not real chicken either, so yeah, that's <laughs> I'm sure true. you're fine. That's so, true. So today's song is is Tears in My Eyes. And Dave, you're a guitar player, so I'm I'm curious because I, you know, I, I'm not. How difficult is this riff to play? It's to me everything sounds difficult on guitar. Uh well, his his opening, you know, that that's Ken on the slide on probably on a I don't know if that's a SG or a Les Paul or what that was. I don't, I don't remember, but that's, it's a little sloppy. It's not, you know, in deference to them playing live and whatever condition they were in, but this is a very, you know, it's a very fast, a uh, little sloppy, a uh, little frantic sounding. If you was tuned to a major chord on the guitar, it's one thing. Then you just go up and down the neck and anywhere you have the slide, it's a major chord. So these are, that would be that would make this easy if it's tuned to a guitar normal um you know the normal guitar string setup a lot more difficult so i don't think it is i think it's tuned to a to a e chord or a d chord or some kind of major chord um but it's you know it's tough when you're playing live and you got to be right on the right on the mark with the slide if you're off you know a bear, the barest of an inch you're gonna hear it so it's kind of tough. He was he was an excellent slide player, and obviously, so um, he did the best he could do. And I think for what this is, it's a good performance. I'm not crazy about this song in any ways, but I think it's a good performance. Mm-hmm. Now, when you play with a slide, that's basically the equivalent of playing like a fretless instrument, then, because it it just kind of takes that out of the equation, doesn't it? Takes the frets out of the equation. Yeah, I yeah. mean, you can you know, obviously, you know, country players and guitar and rock players, so they all play notes. And you can do chords to an effect, but uh, it's kind of like, I guess, a fretless. I never thought of it that way, but yeah. Very interesting. I own a slide. I think it's still in the package. Do you own a guitar? I do own a guitar. Well, then you're... I, I, can't, I, make, I make some decent sounds on it from time to time. Like if I have to just record a few notes or something, I can, I can usually pull it off. Uh, I, I don't even know bar chords yet. It's on my list of things to learn before I turn uh, whatever 100 or whatever it's going to be. If you have a slide and you have a guitar, you simply must call Mick Box and say, hey, if you guys ever play Tears in My Eyes, I'm your man. And <laughs> give him the band. That's it. I Simple. When, when I interviewed Dave Rimmer, I did challenge him to an open note bass guitar competition. <laughs> I said, any other note, you're probably going to be better than me, but I will I will that's take funny. you down on an open note any day. That's funny. That's that's. I, I dare even challenge him that because he could probably do better than that. Better than me on that, one, anyway. One thing, back to a serious note. One thing about Ken when on this song, he goes about as high up on the strings as you can go before you hit the bridge with that slide, and you'll hear it like in the first three or four seconds or four or five seconds. I mean, he's way up there, as high as you can go, and, and sloppy because it's hard. It's hard to get your hands up there that fast and and do what he's doing. And I think he wanted to sound sloppy right there because it's it, it's. I don't know. It's a frantic part of the song. They just went right into it and, and, uh, you know, boom, boom. And then the song starts. Um, I like the, actually, I like the recorded version. Don't tell anybody I said this better than the live version. And I don't normally like album versions better than live versions, but on this one, I actually do because it was so much more in tune and it wasn't so crazy. And it was, I think it was mixed better, you know, but that's live versus not live. So, 
Um, but he did a great job on this. I mean, you know, he's a, he was a great slide player. I think that's that's fair to say, though. And the one one thing I've always loved about the song, I really do like the riff. I think it's a lot of fun. It's it's adventurous. It's it's moving really quick. Uh, but I I always thought that there needed to be more vocals. Like the verses are just in and out so quick. I'm like, give me something more, like double the lines or something. I've always felt that it lacked a little bit there. How long is this song? About two and a half minutes? Uh, the studio version is, I think, yeah, the live version is 501. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, um, they're, they're, it's, yeah, it's not the Uriah Heap that I consider to be the full blown. We sound like Uriah Heap. Mm -hmm. it, it's just, it's just not. It, it's what, it's what, it's what you're describing. It's light on the vocal harmonies. It's light on, um, multiple vocals at the same time along with david byron so yeah it's 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 different yeah i'm just looking it up now because i'm really curious what the the length uh oh you know what it is the studio version is actually 501 also okay i didn't think it was that long i didn't realize it was either okay hmm. but you know there th you there's go. a couple songs that are 10 minutes long that just they go so fast it really doesn't feel like they're that long even Salisbury doesn't feel like it's 16 minutes to me. Nah, no, it doesn't. It doesn't feel that long at all, actually. July morning always ends too soon for me. Mm -hmm. Circle of Hands always ends too soon. I wish I could just keep going because they're such great tunes, you know. Uh, this one, not so much. <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm definitely with you on those. Those are a couple of my favorites, too. And I'm, I'm really looking forward to uh, when we get to Circle of Hands, which is uh, not it's only a couple episodes away. For us, it's two weeks. For our listeners, it's just a few days. My favorite song they ever did. It's, it's always been on the top of my list as well. It's such a powerful chorus, too. Uh, but we're talking about Tears in My Eyes today. Let's uh, let's get into the song and hear what, what you were talking about uh, with Ken getting into those high notes right off the bat. What do you say? I'm in. Let's go. All right. Well, it would help if I actually started it from where the song starts. What we're going to do is uh, a song featuring all the guitars in the band for you right now. Uh, it's a song from the Look At Yourself album. It's kind of rock and roller. A little bit of luck. It's called Tears In My Eyes. Jeez. See? Yeah, he really did. There's yeah, there's something there. really interesting about the sound of a guitar when you're playing slide because you don't have that separation of notes at all. And it really kind of, even though it's a rock and roll tune, it almost feels a little bit country because of that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think he's tuned to a major chord and it's just it's just it's frantic. It's bombastic. And I can't country songs aren't as bombastic as this is i don't think in general but this one is like off the hook for sure another thing i noticed too is that was a really fast count in from lee kers like just two quick hi-hats and they all started and i thought oh, wow yeah. you're really not even setting the tempo you're just saying all right guys go and you can tell how loud it was because as soon as he helped up the volume control i got feedback i don't think that's a stratocaster but it could have been but uh it's pretty it, it's a pretty tinny guitar it doesn't sound very heavy like a les paul or anything or with hum, uh, humbuckers on it do you think how much it, it doesn't sound like maybe there was a lot of distortion on it either no it could have been telecaster too i know he played all of them so um no it doesn't sound like very much distortion it just turns like it's just turned up really loud now i've seen pictures of david byron with a guitar did he ever play with them on stage at, uh, on guitar as well I honestly have to say, I don't know. I've never seen, I've seen him at the piano. I've seen him at the organ. I've never seen him holding a guitar. Interesting. So I don't know. All right. Well, let's see what they, where they go next. Cause we're only just cracking the surface of this one. All right. Lee Kerslake is certainly into playing the song. 
Yeah, he's really going at it. He's going at it. So is Gary Thane. He's all over the place again. Right. Yeah. So Mick is playing, uh, it sounds like a lower rhythm in my left ear, and I'm hearing the the higher guitar. I think that's Ken then in my right ear. Uh, it's Mick is just playing some strumming along with this, right? Yeah, he's just doing the chords. Mm-hmm. Yep. But yeah, it, it really thickens it. it up. Yeah, well, he's, he's not overly distorted either. It's just like he's just uh, hitting it hard. But he's not trying to stand out as being the main guitar. Obviously, he's not. He's just providing the heart, the down and dirty backup along with the bass. Right, and They're he's basically almost playing the same thing. And he's not letting the notes ring out that much. He's really kind of not just muting them and just getting that chunky chunk sound it's in there. Chunky, it's chunky. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, very much. David, of course, sounds fantastic. Yeah, always did. Yeah, it, the the backing vocals seem a little thin so far. Well, I don't know. Let's listen. Listen to how far they go, and if it gets any more involved, I think, don't think it does. Um, there's no time for them to get any words in. This is a really fast song. It is. That's why I'm so surprised. <laughs> it's, the studio version is five minutes. I really thought it was closer to half that. Me too. I'm confused, but I'm always confused. Let's go. <laughs> well, you're in the right place. It's almost like Ken Hensley said, hey, guys, my guitar is really going to cut through the sound, so it's going to be louder than everyone else. And Lee Kerslake said, hold my beer. <laughs> and, I'll, and I'll show you. A, and it's going to be a little bit out of tune, and we're going to have a volume war. And Mick has been back on wrong. Okay, I'll just stand here and do what I always do, and it'll make it better. Because somebody has to hold this together for you guys. I, yeah, you're probably right. They probably had a, they probably had a war. Yeah, I, more. I, that's that's definitely Lee saying, uh, making a statement in that chorus. Uh, I, but I think that the, overall, the balance so far is pretty good. The, the towns, yeah. the towns, toms sound really dry again. We're back to that song. So I think this might be from a different night. What do you think? Yeah, probably. I'm trying to think of what the what Ken's guitar sound like, like who else? And I can't put my finger on it. There's nobody I've ever heard that sounded like quite like what he's doing right now, because it's so... It's really fast and it's really kind of simple and it's really not really distorted, but it's your eye heap. So it's hard to peg this one for me. I wonder if there's maybe a Southern rock song or something that, that might be close to this as far as that goes, but they're usually not this, they don't have this tempo. Right. They don't have the tempo. Yeah. Right. I mean, it's, it's got like a Southern rock sound, but it's at a, a heavier pace. Definitely isn't Freebird. <laughs> Definitely, Definitely not. not Freebird. And we are all thankful for that. I was going to say that Mick was really quiet on that sound with the tremolo there, but actually when the vocals came in, that level really worked. He has just a hint of distortion. Mm -hmm. Probably cranked it down on his guitar and just started doing the wah. Yeah. That sounds pretty sweet. It does. Now, normally I, this is one of the parts in a song where I'm like, okay, take a song like Hush by uh, Joe South or, uh, you know, some other songs like early Beatles that, that do this kind of repetitive na 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 type stuff. And normally, I really don't like it. For some reason, in this song, I'm okay with it. Well, it gets it gets pretty involved. Um, if I remember correctly, I haven't listened to this one honestly, intently for, for a while now. Mm -hmm. This is like I kind of skip past this one all the time. Um, but if I remember going forward on this, it gets pretty intense. Doesn't it go back and forth, and they're doing triads in 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 harmony? Oh, I don't know. It's been 30 years since I've heard it. So <laughs> a little, a little longer than you. I'm not, I think, 
Okay, let's see where this goes. I don't remember where this goes at this point, as, as far as the harmonies are, are are concerned. I would say it wouldn't surprise me, though. I think that's that's fair for what right. these guys do right. live. Well, let's it, find let's out. Let's see where this goes. Hmm? Okay, well, before it gets any further, because a lot of stuff just happened. <laughs> yeah, a lot of stuff. They just kind of all joined in one at a time. It was kind of cool. Yeah, I, I definitely think there were some volume issues here. There were there was a time when the drums were starting to drown out the vocals a little bit. Um, yeah. Then they kind of boosted David in the mix a little bit, it sounded like, or he maybe was got closer to the mic. Um, but I love mixed tone, um, the way that it's evolved through this, going from the tremolo back into the distortion, and now this, you know, really scratchy sound that we're hearing now. He was, he was playing a complimentary, almost backwards part to what they were singing, uh, getting louder and louder and louder while he was doing it. And then right before we cut this off just now, he was full volume. Um, but his his guitar part is actually pretty cool. For sure. And now I want to ask you, so a slide guitar, usually the slide is on one finger. So did Ken, is Ken not using the slide at this point? He's just kind of backing up Mick with the rhythm? Uh, he could have been doing, with, doing it with the slide. I mean, I don't, I didn't remember, I didn't remember hearing him just now. I remember hearing Mick mm -hmm. and I remember hearing them singing. I don't remember Ken right now. Okay. You might, we might hear a little bit more from him because Mick is definitely louder at this point. Well, we'll hear him again, but we, I don't I don't remember the last 20 seconds of, of, of hearing Ken during this, this this ascending volume thing that they just went through, this chorus part. I don't remember Ken's guitar in there. Yeah, it's it's definitely kind of weird that the balance just kind of morphed through this part. This you know, there are, part, there are parts on these songs, you know, and it was live and re mixed and everything else after the fact. There are parts where things drop out and come back in as we'll go through when they do the longer you know, when they go through Circle of Hands and Gypsy and, and that kind of thing, where parts drop out, they come back in, and that's not due to the players, that's due to the mix for the album. Sure. It has to be, because they didn't stop playing and turn themselves down, you know. So, yeah, maybe this is just one of those spots. Very well could be. Let's get back to the song. That was a nice screech at the end there, but it sounded like yeah. he was a little off before that. He played everything that they do on the studio version just now, mm. but it's really fast and it's a little in, not intonated correctly because maybe the guitar is out of tune a little bit. Maybe he's a little nervous and it's a slide. They're difficult anyways to be spot on the frets all the time, you know, keep those things in tune with the song playing that fast. That shows you how good he is. Cause he almost, he almost got there. But that's a pretty long passage that he just went through. 
one oh, note at sure. a time, one slide note at a time, you know, and, and, uh, yeah, he, um, he did a commendable, uh, you know, it's his song. He knew what he wanted to play and he did it the best he could do it. I'm sure this is about as close he's going to get live. Yeah, it's, I think it's a really good version of the song and, and they're definitely keeping true to the original while really making it a, a different feel live. I like that. Um, it's it's a tough balance to do that sometimes, but they seem to be able to really pull that off on every song we've listened to so far. You know, and we didn't hear him again until Mick got done with that, with the intro again, because all of a sudden it got quieter, we got quiet for a second, and then Ken came back in and started this long passage that we just heard. So I don't think he was playing 20 seconds prior to this, 30 seconds prior to this. I think that was just Mick, because I don't think he was playing along with Mick just now before he started this slide part thinking back on it yeah that that very well could be um i just i like the sound of both guitars i think that the sounds work really well together i thought that in the studio too um but the overall sound of the song is it's pretty good yeah i i i like the way the song sounds i'm not crazy about the song itself although i do like the studio version better than than this version it's just more cohesive for me right but they're very energetic on this i'm sure I'm sure I can imagine him standing there with, you know, his head back and just maybe this was like a, an SG junior or something he was playing. I don't know what he, I can't remember what he was playing during this, these, two, these two nights. I don't, he, don't know if I've even seen pictures that are showing him, but I can imagine him doing this because this is a hard song to do. Yeah. But it's, it's, uh, it's definitely something that they, they really feel like they're passionate about playing. No question about it. Yeah. Let's get back to the song. I'm going to say that they were kind of layering the chorus a little bit because that sounded completely rich and full from yeah, vocals that was and good. guitars. Yeah. Yeah. They, they kind of pulled it together there. That was, yeah, that was good. Mm. I, I, that must've been intentional. I I'm thinking that just doing like the light chorus in the beginning with just a little bit of backup and then just kind of layering could it be. as they went forward. Very well could be because that was very different. That was like, um, you know, production version production uh, quality right yeah well, let's see how it ends crazy huh yeah that that was a lot of energy in that i thought that was a perfect ending you know ken was exactly uh like he was on the album it was note for note yeah yeah that was really well done yeah i would agree i mean it's it's a song i've always enjoyed um i like this version of it actually i like the the passion that they played with i like the the energy i like that it it felt like it came alive yeah, I, I I guess I don't dislike it. I don't like it as much as the studio version. I think it's a little fast mm. for my taste. I always think of them as a bit more serious. Oh, I um, see. You know, it just seems like a little fast. He's a little out of tune um, for whatever reason, you know. And uh, But it's, you know, it, it's a hell of a... You try playing this thing live like that on a slide guitar. <laughs> you know, it's got, it's got to be tough to do. Well, I think we all know my guitar prowess, so... <laughs> Oh, I wouldn't, right. be, I right. wouldn't even right. attempt that. That's why the slide is still in the package. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's right. It's, it's, well, we got through this one. I, yeah, I, I think it's a cool song. I, it fits the album. I, it's, it's one of the, um, one of the ones that I don't think probably should have been left off, but it's not like the rest of them to me. Yeah, I get what you're saying. I mean, and that's, that's okay. There's going to be some songs that no matter how much you like a band, there's always going to be songs that you're like, you know, it's, it's just not as good as the other songs I like by this band. And it's one that you skip over most of the time. Every once in a while, if you're just listening to the whole album, you'll let it play. But uh, that, that happens. 
You know, I, I, was I don't know. Car today. Today. I was in the car today for two hours driving, and I had uh, I had this album on, and uh, I got to that song. I didn't even know I, that it played. I would just I just I just don't I tune it out. You know, yeah. I just went through and went to the next one. Mm-hmm. And, but at least you don't do that with your driving. No, I don't do that with driving. <laughs> I only do that with 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 that song. Well, I hope that you rest up this week, Dave, because we've got our longest song coming up next week when we review Gypsy. We're talking 14 minutes and one second. Oh, I better brush up on my synthesizer explanation uh, <laughs> dialogue because <laughs> he played everything you could do on one just about. That, that that's a gr- I can't wait to do Gypsy. That's a great song. Yeah, I, I'm going to be curious to see how, how it's pulled off. Um I know how they did it live when I saw them, but I don't know how they did it in 73. So I'm, I'm going to be curious. It's a, it's a real adventure. This song it's, it's almost like a, you know, a musical novel because there's so many different passages and different things that happen. It really is a journey. I have to ask you again. You have not seriously, honestly listened to this song coming up gypsy next week. You haven't listened to this in how long? Uh, this version about 30 years. Yeah, the whole album. Maybe we, should, maybe we should play it through its entirety once and not break it up so you can hear the whole thing. Or maybe just take one sneak peek before you and I get on the phones together. I don't know. I, I kind of like the just initial reaction. This song is so, there's so much going on in this production wise, the way they mixed it, the way it's performed. There's so, oh, wow. Okay. I'll be happy to drag you through it. It's great. <laughs> great tune. Well, I, you're dragging me willingly now. My pleasure. This is a this, this this song and Circle of Hands. I you know this obviously this Circle of Hands and July Morning are the three biggies for you know for the album. So um, yeah, that's something. True. And July Morning yeah. clocked in at eleven fifty. Circle of Hands comes in at eight fifty seven. And the fourth longest song on the album would be Look at Yourself, which is seven fifty seven. So uh, these guys really like to to play these songs live. Oh, I take that back. The rock and roll medley at the end is almost nine minutes. And how long is Gypsy? Uh, Gypsy is fourteen oh one. Perfect. Yeah. All right. We're gonna have a I'm lot to dig into. I can't wait. So rest up, eat your vegetables, and we'll do this again I next will. week. All right, man. I'll be around. I'll right. I'll be here when you're here. Excellent. Well, you take care, my friend. We will see you in a week. For you guys, we'll see you tomorrow or in a couple of days, depending on where this episode falls. All right, Scott. Always a pleasure. Always. Cheers. Thank you for joining me on this episode of Uriah Heap, the Magician's Podcast. If you have enjoyed this show, please consider going over to Apple Podcasts or your favorite podcast outlet, leaving a rating or a review. Be sure to subscribe to make sure that you are notified when new episodes are available. Please be sure to share this podcast with your fellow Uriah Heap enthusiasts and anyone who you think would like Uriah Heap, which should be everyone. And if you are so inclined, please feel free to contribute to the Patreon account. And if you are not a Patreon subscriber, you can also pay through the PayPal link on the website listed in the show links below. I would also like to thank Uriah Heap for their very generous support of the show. And thank you guys for listening. We'll see you in the next episode. Happy days. <laughs>